ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to MSI 2021. I am Captain Flowers, and I am joined by the president and CEO of the Fudge Fan Club <laughs> himself, Mr. Azale will be joining me here for these last three games of the day. Our first one of which will pit Mad Lions up against Pentanet GG. And Pentanet are still looking for that juicy first win. Yep, looking for that big win. And it would also be, for members of the Fans Club, <laughs> a huge win. Uh, because if Pentanet were able to upset Mad, of course, that could have implications with the potential match between Mad and Cloud9. It looks like those are the two teams that are battling for that fourth place spot right now. Of yep. course, Mad, massive favorites in this game against Pentanet, have been pretty consistent against most of the teams. You know, they have looked really good against pretty much everyone except, I would say, you know, Dom Juan and RNG. Uh, Mad have been very solid against all the other teams, you know, three and one against PSG. G. They obviously took down Penjanet once. They crushed Cloud9. So Mad coming in here as the heavy favorites, looking to continue business as usual. You know it. And try to pick up another win. And last time these two teams met, it was a pretty swift Mad Lions victory. 26 minutes, it was 15 to seven. There wasn't a whole lot that Pentanet was able to really build against this squad. We'll see what sort of a strategy they have cooked up here today. Bands are done for the first half of the draft. Lucian, Morgana, Varus, Udir, Lee Sin, Renekton, all banned away. And Pentanet decides they wanna go for that rumble. First pick of the whole draft here. Yep, gonna be grabbing that up. Be interesting to see where El Yoya wants to take us with his pick. Of course, he does have a pretty deep champion pool. Uh, we have seen a number of different answers coming through. You know, the big three, the only one remaining was that Rumble, so it makes sense that that was grabbed up. But earlier in the day, we saw Lilia come out from way. We just saw a Volibear game from Blabber. That's going to be a quick lock here for El Yoya. Makes a lot of sense when you consider he played it seven times in the LEC. Only played uh, more actually on the Udyr, which was, of course, banned out. So this is a comfort pick for him and El Yoya is such an incredible early game jungler yes he's good in the later stages too but really his pathing early game a very creative very intelligent uh, he's very good at getting a lot of these early game kills and Volibear is a champion that can really make it happen so Pentanet gonna have to be really careful about where they actually run into this Volibear you know Rumble cannot actually contest Volley in these early game skirmishes yep. in these ganks uh, that could be coming through so Pentanet solo laners, you think, especially, have got to be playing very safe around where El Yoyo could be. And we'll see the Kaisa also drafted here for Mad Lions as their second pick in the draft. And the response from Pentanet is to answer with the entirety of their own bot lane. Mm -hmm. They will grab the Aphelios as the counterpart to the Kaisa there. And considering when you draft Aphelios, you almost always want sort of some kind of safety mechanism for him in the support role. It'll be Thresh for Decoy. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense there, having that Thresh as the safety net like you're talking about. But we really haven't been seeing much of Felios at all at MSI. Has come out, you know, maybe a couple times throughout the entire tournament, but definitely not considered one of those high priority champions. Will be a hyper carry though for Pentanet if he can get to those later stages of the game. Praetith, of course, does have the one game on the champion here. Kaisa has been really high priority for a lot of teams. Karzi already playing it four times at MSI, uh, but really for the for the LCK and LPL teams as well, it feels like they're going to it pretty much every single time. So uh, if you want to play these dive comps and that's looking like what Mad is building, Kaisa yeah. fits in so well, right? You've got Leona, you've got Volley, they're jumping in there, they're applying the plasma with the CC that they have. You have Karzi flying in on the Kaisa, and Karzi has been having an incredible tournament. You know, a lot of people were questioning how well he would perform internationally coming into this, myself being one of them as well, as Karzi and Kaiser were pretty inconsistent in the LEC, you know, did struggle against some of the top LEC bot lanes, but it has been largely smooth sailing for Karzi. I think he has been having such a good tournament for them. Okay, bands have gone through in the second half here. It's Oriana, Nar, Urgot, and Cassidy all banned away. The Cassidy ban might seem a little bit strange, but remember the first time these two teams played against one another, that was the response that Pentanet had when they saw their opponents pick the Oriana was to answer with Cassidy. Now, granted, the Cassidy pick did very poorly. It accomplished not much of anything, but it's one of those picks that's so different and it has such a game warping presence if it comes online. They decide to ban it out anyway. It's going to be Jace as the fourth pick of this draft yeah. for the Mad Lions. 
and we'll have to see what the response from Pentanet is. They've already got the rumble locked in, so I don't think that Nunu's think gonna come true, but all right, it's Kiana. Yeah, they could go York again. It's actually quite a good matchup into the Jace. It didn't work out last time. I believe they brought it out against Cloud9 in their first match against them, uh, but the picks here and the band's pretty smart for Mad. You know, they ban out the Urgot. That's the most played for Biopanther. Uh, PGG had already banned out Gnar. That's the second most played. They take away Jace. That's the third most played. So you're, you're pushing down, <laughs> right down the list. Bio Panther pretty far as far as his prio does go. Scion is next on the list for the champions that he has been playing this tournament. Of course, you can withstand the Jace. That is more your goal to just be able to withstand the onslaught. You will get pushed in early. But if you don't get blasted, if you don't get dove, you can get towards Tabby's, get towards the early Bramble, and start to stabilize in that 1v1. Lasan. Okay. Ooh, so this is actually, you know, people are going to be kind of shocked because we're not seeing Lissandra at all, but Lissandra is so good into assassins and particularly Kiana, who really does depend on the grass blade, you know, for that kind of invisibility. You can reveal all three of your spells, you know, the Q, W, and E are all kind of that AOE. It's pretty easy to actually reveal in that. And if Kiana ever dives in, you can both self ult defensively if you're getting ganked, but also if she goes in, you hit her with the R. She's very squishy. She relies on being mobile, on being elusive to actually stay alive. So if Kiana goes in, gets ulted by Lissandra, you will get 100 to zero almost guaranteed with the amount of follow-up CC that is there for the Mad Lions. Lissandra also builds very well into the Zonias, something that is really, really effective against that Kiana. So it is a niche pick, and that may have some of the Mad Lions fans worried, but in this particular matchup, very, very strong. Compositionally, I think makes a lot of sense here to be able to lock down this key target and just deny Chaz really much of an opportunity to kind of snowball the game. I mean, you're talking about the build path into Zonia's Hourglass. Zonia's the best active in the game against the mm -hmm. Assassin class in general, and Lissandra has it built into her ulti along with a heal. Such a powerful defensive tool, yep. as well as those offensive capabilities you were describing at locking the target down. I really do like seeing this pulled out as just that very, as you already described it, it's a super niche answer, but in the right situation, man, it can just feel crippling for a Kiana or a similar champion. Absolutely, and this is something that you see come out sometimes times in solo queue. I'm going to be interested to see exactly how Humanoid wants to build it. A lot of times people will go towards something like the Rocket Belt, and then you go Zonia second if you're looking more for that playmaking style of build. This does leave you a little bit low on mana, but uh, it still can be pretty effective because you're getting HP on the Rocket Belt, harder to actually burst down. Uh, you can see he is going Electrocute, Ultimate Hunter there as well. So the sustain is going to be more uh, from the Biscuits as well as Time Warp Tonic. You start corrupting here. Taste of Blood as well. Yep, so Taste of Blood for the kind of trading there. And if you can start actually getting a decent amount of CDR, you stack up a couple stacks on Ultimate Hunter. Uh, the Ultimate does become incredibly low cooldown. Of course, you may have trouble actually getting in on to Praetith, who does have cleanse as well, but it doesn't really matter. You can just get an ultimate down on Chaz or even Pabu and try to burst them down, and that will be very, very effective in the team fights. And when you're diving in on someone like Praetith, you can just utilize the self ult. It actually does a, a pretty high amount of damage, and it's such a strong zoning tool, right? You know, you fly in the back line, you WQ self ult on top of these carries. They have got to kind of back it up, and that creates space for the rest of your team to really get a lot done here. Armut looking like he wants to just harass a little bit on that blue buff. With seeing them on the top side, they know they are on blue. Armut will try to harass as his team is going to actually invade and steal away the red. So already a great level one here for Mad. A lot of people are starting to prey on the level one of Rumble, you know, recognizing that, yes, he does have a fast clear, but you have to start W for that fast clear. And W is not a powerful team fight tool at level one, right? Like, you can't contest the level one so you end up in this really awkward situation, and we'll see if Pabu goes for an invade and mid lane has the push and Jace has the push, well, guess what? You're actually gonna get that defended by the Mad Lions. So very likely here, it's gonna be a three quadrant clear for El Yoya, and it's gonna be Pabu dealing with scraps. We can see him going down to the wolves already, and it's actually all a full camp clear, three camp clear on the bot side for El Yoya. He's even taking the Krugs, so that will be defended, but this is this is a brutal start already for Pabu. Pabu coming down into that bottom side quadrant now. One thing I want to address real quick before we get any further into the game, a couple important differences between the loadouts we're seeing here on the champions. Pabu has opted for the Dark Harvest, 
which is a rune that it's already been mentioned a couple of different times by a few different people in pro play. Many players feel that they aren't able to get enough stacks on this, but Pabu has the confidence that it's the right choice here in this game. Also worth pointing out that the teleports are uneven in this one. Mad does have teleport on both of their solo laners, whereas Chaz has the ignite, very common for assassins. Also in the bottom lane, cleanse for Praetith. It makes sense when you're against this point and click CC from things like Leona, from things like the Lissandra, you must be able to get out of those, but it does mean less direct combat power compared to what the heal from Karzi will be able to do as well. Decoys running exhaust compared to Ignite because when you're against these Kaises and Tristanas and 80 carries that have dive power of their own, it makes a world of difference. Here in the mid lane, Humanoids got control, but Pentanet is walking towards bottom, looking to maybe make a play. Decoy goes in, Kaiser gets caught, but they're looking to turn things right back around with Decoy taking some damage now. Kaiser looking to keep on going forward. Pabu's at about 100 HP. Humanoid with the flash for the first blood. Nicely done. You land the hook, but you just got to back it up anyway. The TP comes down here from Humanoid. Bio Panther was trying to match. You can see the flash got taken off Armut. So safe to assume that Armut flashed in there to try to interrupt the teleport coming through from Bio Panther. And Mad striking on that bottom side. I think Pabu was feeling the pressure to make something happen because he knew he was so far behind and now Praetis is just going to die likely. Oh, he tries to use the cleanse, but it just does not get it done. That's what I'm talking about. Cleanse versus heal. Yes, the cleanse will get you out of some of the CC, but your health bar is still oh so squishy as hell. Yeah, this is looking really bad already here for Pentanet. So the level one, Elioya already took away two camps from his bottom side. There's no red buff on Pabu. He didn't feel that he could invade. So the pressure is there to try to get something done. And like expected, flash in, interrupt the TP. You could tell that from the summoner cooldown there. Pabu trying to retreat, but Humanoid has arrived, flashes in, finishes him off. And Mad get that follow-up kill in the 2v2. And yes, Praetith will collect some of the C CS, but the biggest problem is you go back to base and you got a longsword and boots, whereas Karsi's going back to base and he gets a noon quiver, right? So the power oh. is so much higher and Papa's gonna die again. Yeah, I don't think the the items are the biggest problem now. I think the biggest problem uh. now is we've got Rumble spending most of his time in the dirt. Pabu now 0-2 and 0 in the first five minutes of the game. The Mad Lions are doing a great job being able to keep this rumble from ever coming online. Yeah, Pabu has had a, a couple of tough ones here on the rumble playing against Domwon. I believe it was yesterday or the day before. You know, tried to go for that, that kind of a split map. He ended up trying to invade, had to execute, got put so incredibly far behind. This time didn't even feel like he could invade. And it does feel like we are starting to see a bit of an established answer to this Rumble jungle, to how you can actually handle it. Of course, it does mean you need to have pushing lanes, right? Like you can't you can't deny the trade of sides if you don't have pushing lanes, right? Matt yeah. were able to do this because mid was pushing, top was pushing, he loses his bot side, he can't invade top because the soul lanes will collapse and kill him. Um, so it's, it's not a guaranteed answer, but this does seem to be something that Rumble has really been struggling with. And you've got no choice really as Pabu, but to just keep trying to gank because he lost his top side again on the invade. He died up there. He knows there's no camps. So he has to go down bot side. The problem here is this isn't solo queue. Mad are tracking you. Mad no. Guess what? There's no camps available on top side. Where could he be? Hmm, well, he's going to go to the bot side. So Kaiser and Karzi have no flash. Get what's, guess what they're going to do? They're not going to walk up, right? And and Mad is, has been, I think, very intelligent about this, this sort of cross-map play. Uh, when they do create advantages, they are good at understanding what their opponent's win conditions are, right? And this is something that I think... El Yoya has been really proficient at, you know, tracking junglers. You'll often see pings come out at the expected camp where the enemy jungler will be. And very often he is on point with it. So that is something that you always uh, love to see from your junglers. It's just such a benefit when they're adept at tracking their opponent. Okay, we've got all solo laners with their level six. So ultis have come online. Worth noting that Bio Panther has also currently swapped his teleport over to an Ignite. So we might see Pentanet try to make some sort of a play here on the top side. Back in the bottom lane, the 2v2 just continues business as usual, but it is a nice CS lead here for Karzi. And it's important to remember with a champion like Aphelios, this isn't a Zaya who has a get out of jail free card on the ulti, right? Ooh, this is level a champion. Six volley, they want to dive. If they fall too far behind, Praetis only going to be in more and more trouble and the trouble keeps on keeping on goodbye Praetis go 
Goodbye, decoy. At least they don't got to die alone. It's two more over to the Mad Lions. Oh, Mad Lions snowballing this one out of control. Pabu trying to get something done on the top side, but he's already been spotted by that pink ward. He is level five. They could look for a dive here. Honestly, yep. it's it's a low percentage play, but I don't blame you. You are, are looking like you are just going to bleed out of this game, so you've got to try something. You've got the Spellbook Ignite. Go for the dive. See if you can make something happen. Well, pa Bio Panther is nope. already almost dead. Our mood has immediately shut this down. Chaz rotates up towards this top uh, lane as well. There's no coming. minion wave. And Matt are coming. I mean, this is just desperation, right? And Armut yeah. played that so well. You know, keeping Bio Panther in range of the tower, he knocks him back towards it again. The Spellbook Ignite got committed. El Yoya as well as Kaiser move up to cover. So there's no chance at making the dive happen. Pentanet are going for desperation plays, but really it's all they have left uh, because they are just monstrously behind. And Humanoid moving up here, they want the fight. El Yoya goes in. Chaz taking a lot of damage here with Humanoid coming over the wall. Chaz with the flash to get to safety underneath the tier one turret here in the top lane. He will stay alive, but with half health and almost no mana left, this is not a good situation. No. The Pentanet finds themselves in. Mad Lions making oh, well, they're sure gonna they die. are able to back. Bio Panther's making his way up here now. Interrupts the Hex Flash, but now he's in a 1v3. Pabu and Chaz looking to rotate down here and help him out a little bit. Bio Panther likely to die first. We'll see if he gets any value out of the passive. Chaz tries to follow up, but instead there's the lockdown. There's exactly what you were talking about, Azale. How easily Lissandra can make Kiana just stop. El Yoya gets away too. The game is 7-0. to zero. Kaiser continues the charge. They will find another kill into Pabu, and the Mad Lions have absolutely absolutely decimated this early game. Uh, I think it's time to clock in a time of death. 9.24 on the clock Ooh. there. Rest in peace, Pentanet. Mad leaving, no doubt whatsoever in this one. They are so far ahead. The level one was intelligent. They have snowballed this game to perfection. Pabu was left with no choice but to go for these desperation ganks, which were anticipated and responded to perfectly here by Mad. And this one is just an absolute steamroll. You look at the gold differences shown there. Scion knows that his jungler and his mid are about to get dope, right? So he has to get up there. He has to be able to try to prevent this. And yes, he gets some good damage down. Pabu does get the level up, hit six, had a well-placed equalizer, but you're just not quite strong enough. That is the levels. That is the golden action. El Yoya survives. They kill them all off. And now you're losing plates on the bottom side as well. And they have the Herald. So that tower is actually just going to go down. This is going to be nearing a 7,000 gold lead. Holy cow, man. Ah. Look at that. When the worst score... Oh, no, I don't even have time to make uh -oh. my joke. Never mind. Chaz is about to pop here in mid. There it is. Kaiser gets it with the proc on the Leona W. We've seen that result in a Leona death to chickens, but this time it is a Leona kill on Kiana. Mad Lions, nine kills in 10 minutes. <laughs> well, I think you can confirm it. Chickens greater than Kiana. You know, <laughs> we've seen it displayed here at MSI. You know, we got the power levels worked out at this point. Does look like it's going to be likely an Everfrost for Humanoid and won't be going for that, that rocket belt that some people would if they want that extra HP, play it a little bit more defensively, perhaps. Uh, but Everfrost also really, really good. Layering the CC here oh, can yeah. be exceptionally powerful. There's a lot of melee slash short range champions, you know, four that when you're looking over at Pentanet and Kaiser. Just starting things up, of course, won't have the damage to kill off Scion, but is pushing him back and locking him up. Looks like they want to go for it. Okay, Bio Panther with the flash to get away. Notice how Kaiser was positioning himself between Bio Panther and the turret just to make sure that he could not use the ult to try to escape. Kaiser with the smart positioning forces out the summoner spell. Karzi has rotated into the top lane now with no turret left to siege in the bottom lane. Why not just get to work somewhere else? Meanwhile, Praetith's now in trouble. Humanoid going after him, forcing out the cleanse. That summoner spell will get Praetith away here this time. Bio Panther trying to use the ulti to get back to the tier one oh, turret, no. but instead he's gonna be intercepted. Kaiser is almost completely out of mana here. Exhaust used onto Karzi, so they won't have enough damage to get the kill here. At least Pentanet will find themselves, honestly, their first big thing of this game in grabbing the first dragon, but it's too little, it's too late. Decoy having a flash to keep himself alive. Gets a death sentence onto El Yoya, but only pulls him in range for one single turret shot. Bio Panther trying to follow up if he can. Equalizer's gonna get a whole lot of nothing, as now Humanoid finds himself in that death chamber, and there you go. 
Pantanets on the board. Big shut down there for Pabu, but they're going to need a lot more than that to try to scrape their way back in the game. Karzi taking the solo gold on the tower up on that top side. Pentanet do get a kill. They do get that tower. And I also realized I'm trolling because this is actually the same amount of HP I'm pretty sure on Rocket Belt and Everfrost. Uh, Rocket Belt, still more of the option kind of just for, for the engage. You know, you want the extra little bit of mobility, wave clear. Everfrost, obviously, pretty darn standard, though, on Losandra. But either way, Pentanet, you're just going to be grouping. You're going to be looking for picks. That's your only hope. You can't actually ever come back in a game like this if you're playing it normally. So I think what we're going to see is just continual fights from Pentanet. They group up. They hope that they can find you know, odd-numbered fights where they can create an advantage like this one and hope and pray that they can scrape their way back into this game. But Mad is doing such a good job. Even when you get that kill mid, you lose your tower top. They're pushing all lanes as a winning team should do. Yep. And that makes it so even if you lose a fight on one part of the map, you can never win across the map because the Mad members are just individually so much stronger. Pabu's in some trouble yet again. Ulti comes down, follow-up CC. CC goes through. Pabu's able to flash Ooh. away. The CC chain is not quite perfect enough, but now they're not done. Decoy will be the target here next. Elyoya grabbing a killing spree on that one, but Kaiser's in serious danger of dying. Chaz will pick that up. Elyoya continues his retreat. Biopanther will not have the speed to pursue him any further. Humanoid continuing to try to press forward again. Just take Fight, any sort fight, of resource fight, I can. Fight, fight. Bio Panther, you want to get out of there, buddy. I know you're the solo laner, and that's the AD carry, but you don't want nothing to do with this. El Yoya wants to steal away the blue if they can. That goes over to him. Okay. Chaz can pick up the kill. Chaz is going in, but he is going right back oh! out. Nicely done. Pentanet's mid laner picking up a kill on the enemy jungle. Now Humanoid's in a 1v3. He'll get killed off as well. Pentanet with a good punish. Nicely done from Pentanet. Chaz with the outplay, getting a couple of kills there. Karzi fishing, not quite, as Chaz does finish the recall. But again, you're still getting pushed in across the map. Matt is monstrously ahead here. Karzi up towards that top side to collect the farm. Let's watch this one more time. I love the pro view replays here. This was really nicely done, honestly. You've got to go for the crazy outplays. You've got to go for the aggressive plays. The flash on the ulti slam down that would have killed him. He's able to hop over the wall there uh, with that grab of the water blade and CC lands. So his team can come in and clean up another kill there. They are on the board fighting back a little bit here, but yeah. let's not pretend that Matt is not fully in control. It's still an absolutely yeah astronomical gold lead and uh, they look like they're cruising towards a victory here we'll see if Pentanet can say anything about that uh, but it's got to be continual fights right it's got to be continual kills going the way of PGG for them to have much hope in this game great if the cleanse again keeping oh, himself yo, yo. safe from that Leona ulti but now the dive is coming out decoy is going to be your target here at the very beginning Kaiser finding himself stuck has to flash over the wall into the wraith pit Pabu continues the chase. Chaz coming around from the flank. Mad Lion's support is down. Nice two-man stun coming out from Kiana Alti, but nobody else is in range to follow up. Mad Lions decide to disengage. There's nothing else to fight here. Bio Panther, however, wants to make sure they can continue the chase. El Yoya gets slowed, but a TP's coming in. We'll see if Humanoid can find much here. Pabu's about to die to Armut, or is he Humanoid picking up the kill against Pabu now? Armut getting himself away here with a blast cone. Bio Panther dies in the top half of the river, and Mad Lions take yet another victory for themselves 8,000 gold ahead at 16 minutes they are rich going straight to the moon this one mad looking to take down that rift herald as well continue the push they already got all the outer towers haven't lost any of their own here just yet and can utilize this to crack another turret they can look to collect this mountain dragon, but I really doubt that this is going to be a game about Dragon Soul. You know, the second dragon here would be the first going down for Mad would be taken around 17, 18 minutes. And I don't think the game is going to last long enough for Soul to really uh, be something that matters. So while Mad may grab it, not going to be too important here. The cleanse forced out by a nicely placed alt there from Kaiser. El Yoya was on the wraparound. They just know they can dive. The turret's low enough that they can always turn and finish it if it becomes an issue here. And Pabu chasing down. They do get one return kill there. And Chaz with a nicely placed Kiana ult. But they just don't really have enough here to chase it down. As they continue going forward, they know they need to get more of an edge. But they don't quite have the damage. And the TP came in. And they were able to turn it around and 
finish off a couple kills here with Arma barely surviving. Yeah, and you could say, hey, it's an overchase or whatever, but honestly, every single play has to be a Hail Mary, right? Yes, You exactly. can't just take one kill and say, all right, guys, that's good. You're down 8,000 gold. Yep. Everything's got to be this crazy play that could get you back into the game. Otherwise, you just lay on the floor and bleed out until exactly. the Nexus says defeat, right? Yep. That's what we need to see Pentanet do is just always be trying, always be looking for some sort of a window. Even if it's a 1% play, that's higher than the percentage chance of you winning by sitting there. Exactly. I mean, that's what I was going to say. The way I look at League of Legends and the way I think pro teams should really approach it is evaluate what you think your chances to win the game are and take any plays that are better than that, right? So if you say this is a 1% chance to win this game from, you know, an 8,000 gold deficit, all your tower is actually going down, then anything that's better than 1% chance is better We're than your current it. odds, right? <laughs> so something that's like a 5% or a 10% play, you normally wouldn't want to go for. But in this case, those are pretty good odds. If yeah. you can get a random pentakill on a Praetith or something, well, hey, maybe that's your way in. Is it going to work out? No, probably not. <laughs> but I mean, sitting back is just a guaranteed loss when you're in this position. So you've got to go for the crazy plays. Okay, there's the hook on to El Yoya, but that's not a target you can initiate on. So Pentanet will have to back up once more. 18 and a half minutes into the game, Azale, and they are stuck inside the walls of their own base. Bio Panther decides to step outside. Nice He'll equalizer. be met with the entirety of Mad Lions. Humanoid pops him. And we'll see if that Kiana ulti gets anything. No, it will not. Travels along the wall, but everybody from Mad gets out of the way. Bio Panther's zombie fades away, turns into a second zombie, but this one's made of ice. Scion just won't die, die. And Bio Panther's finally out of the picture, seeing black and white for the next 15 seconds. Mad Lions will continue pushing forward, looking for the tier two turret. Argoon's about to get hunted to zeroed. Shield keeps him alive, but the ignite is ticking down. He will die. Decoy falls, Chaz falls, Pabu falls. Praetith against the world, and the world's pretty damn big, Isaac. Double kill back over to Karzy. Kaiser even gets the kill in support of combat, and Mad Lions are up 10,000, 11,000 gold. They are crushing this one. Chaz gets a nice little stylish kill there over onto our moot, but the rest doesn't matter as Mad piles in, knocks them all down there. Having a, having a pretty decent game on the Kiana. You know, we, we heard Chaz talk in his interview earlier in the tournament about this pick, how he feels like, hey, yes, you're going to lose in lane, but you don't need as much gold as some of these other champions to be successful. We can kind of see this demonstrated here. As in he goes, he has the Prowler's Claw, closes the gap. Really nicely played, backing out just in the nick of time there. Has the ignite to finish him off, but in the meantime, Karzy's already in the back line, kills them all off. Yes, Arma did die but it really didn't matter in the big picture here. They're taking your entire jungle. They're always getting more kills. They've knocked down almost every outer tower you have, and Baron is on the map here. So really all Madden need to do is start this up. PGG, you go, you can test it. You pray something miracle happens. You pray you can get a kill. You pray you can get a steal uh, because you cannot afford to give up this Baron or the game is just probably going to end during that Baron buff. Well, Baron is gone. Mad Lions have secured that. Kaiser will see Bio Panther approaching. Flashes in, finds the two-man ulti. Pabu with a stasis stays alive. Nice turnaround coming out there with a shutdown over to Kiana, killing off Karzy. But the fight, it's just too much, Azale. They are slapping him with the wallet, just beating him to death with the damn thing. Decoy's the only man left standing, trying to get away from our mood here. He wants to close the gap of the blast cone. He didn't quite get the angle, so he cannot follow Decoy all the way. The Thresh will survive, you but take the those. rest of Pentanet <laughs> will not. Decoy will just buy some time, man. Stop the minions, walk back into the brush, do whatever, who cares? The Baron's gone over to Mad Lions. It's a 14,000 gold game. It's all over except the Nexus falling apart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. I like how he stops the recall just to fight him. Just have a little fun with it. Why not? <laughs> uh, I'm thinking of dance. Come on, let's let's have a little brotherly love here. Or run uh, around in circles or something. Oh uh, uh, no. Okay, he just literally just dies with a lightning field. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's watch this one one more time. Again, mad crushing through, but not before Chaz blows someone up here, taking down the AD carry there as Praetith did have a nice Inferno multi across the team. But of course, it's a one-way trip there for Chaz. He gets burst down. Elioya, the big bear hopping into the back line here. 
does knock down Chaz in return, and you can see how much work Humanoid is getting done. This is one of the things about Lissandra. When you are playing from a winning team, it is such a strong champion because the passive damage is actually really, really high. So when your team is getting those kills and snowballing through, those little ice ghosts are running out and just smacking everybody down. They can get thousands of damage out in a fight sometimes. It can be really, really crazy. But I do want to give credit over to Chaz playing this Kiana and picking this Kiana because I think this type of champion, which you pointed out earlier, even Chaz said, hey, you lose lane, but then you can make plays. That's what I need to see from Pendulum, yeah. right? I hated the fact they locked in Cassidy earlier because he's a sit and wait for me to hit 16 guys type of champ. That's not how Pentanet are going to win games. They've got to be scrappy. They've got to be forcing things. Kiana's the kind of champion that can work in that environment. Yes, the game's already doomed. It's a 15,000 gold difference at 23 minutes, but I like the fact that they're playing these types of champions because mm -hmm. I think that's the way that Pentanet can try to get themselves an upset win at some point here. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also the way they can make themselves some fans, right? You know, yeah. I think they've been a lot of fun. This is a team with some swagger to them. You know, the coach getting out there. He's got some style. They're having fun. They're going with the spicy picks, the Zed, the Kiana. But it looks like this one is pretty much all but wrapped up. Okay, Bio Panther is down. He turns into the first zombie. He turns into the second zombie. He's finally off the map. Mad Lions pushing towards those Nexus turrets. It's a 5v4. Decoy goes for the hook. He finds the Lissandra. A lot of damage coming out. Chaz looking for a bit more. Kaiser's nearly dead here. Humanoid healing up with his own ulti. Kaiser is still burning. Humanoid now with his second invulnerability. That'll buy enough time. That'll get it done. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mad Lions showing Pentanet exactly what they can do in a game of League of Legends. Kaiser does die to the ignite there. El Yoya chasing after Chaz. Our moot goes for the accelerated shock blast. It won't grab the kill. And there you go, GG in 24 minutes. Well played there by the Mad Lions, leaving no doubt whatsoever, picking up their fourth win. They needed that to maintain control of their own destiny here. They really wanted to uh, grab that extra win they are able to do so and stay ahead you know that extra game of cloud nine they yeah. really want to be maintaining the lead that they already have hoping that cloud nine will drop you know some more other games here and there the mad lions doing really well against these teams below them in the standings they have kind of been the bar thus far i would say you know at msi you know the teams below them they have been able to very confidently handle the teams above them they are still trying to find uh, those small improvements those incremental improvements to be able to really challenge the teams at the top of the table and we'll have to track their development throughout the rest of this event uh, because right now they're still looking comfortable and they're in a good position to be able to make it to that knockout stage and beating pentanet just this decidedly shows me that they're not falling into the trap that you see teams fall into sometimes where you just take a game for granted as, oh, it's going to be a win, they can't beat us or whatever, and then you give up a free game that you shouldn't have. Mad Lions clearly just had no mercy going into this. 15,000 gold difference at 23 minutes is not the kind of game that you're taking lightheartedly. That's the kind of game that you're here to win and get it done with. Go on to the next one. Mad Lions had a game plan. They executed, they got it done, and they looked good doing it. That's the end of this game, so we're going to head to a break here. Coming up next, the Analyst Desk will break down how Mad Lions went back to what has been working for them here at MSI. Don't go anywhere. You don't have a chance against me. I can calculate 90 trillion moves in advance. Not fair. Not fair. Ripple gives you wings. The magical power of the realm is a mystery. Like a guardian, it is with you always. Defending you, charging you, watching over you like... Actually, it's not magic. It's this Cisco network. The power behind every gank, every combo, every mind-blowing moment at League of Legends Esports, MSI 2021.
Welcome back to MSI 2021. Mad Lions defeat PGG and Marek, you're here with me to talk about this victory. How does this one feel actually? Because you were coming out from two losses, I feel, and they are the weakest team in the tournament per se, but you know that uh, they're always going to have this surprise pick maybe, and they want to finish the tournament on a good note. So yeah, what was your mindset before going against PGG here? Um, so we know that they like to pick like these uh, off-meta yeah. champions and just like try to surprise in draft. Um, I think they're basically out of the tournament before the game, so um, they just want to play their comfort champion setting. Mm -hmm. um, so we just saved uh, counter pick for mid lane because they, they like to play the assassins. And once they pick Kiana, like it's it's pretty unplayable for them because mm -hmm. Kiana into Lissandra is a really bad matchup. So yeah, from that on, it was a pretty easy game. Nice. Well, you, we'll come back to that, Lissandra, later. But a, for, a, a question for you about the matchups you had recently. Um, it feels like you struggle against the top teams of the tournament, but you n had no difficulties at all against the weaker teams, per se. What made it so difficult against the strong teams? Um, well, I think, the, <laughs> I think the fact that they are stronger <laughs> sure. is, probably <laughs> <laughs> is probably the reason why we are losing. But also, I think a few games against uh, them, we kind of didn't have a good draft. I think the priorities that they have um, on, ch on different champions are different from ours. And maybe they have a better read on the meta. Mm -hmm. And I think right now uh, we realized that what we were doing is not really working. So we are going to try to change it up a bit and try out some new picks. Uh, yeah. And maybe next time it will work. You often mentioned the draft, but outside of this draft, when it comes to individual plays, uh, teams' play style, and how they see the games, have you been able to learn anything from these losses? Um, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think the, especially RNG and Damon, they play uh, a lot for for basically every jungle camp. So uh, I don't think many teams in Europe do that. So it's really hard to play against them. Because like every time your raptors are spawning, they're they're instantly there, and like if you if you give them all of your camps, then you're gonna be so far behind. So that's the main thing that I think we learned from mm -hmm. playing against these teams. Nice. Well, you have two teams left to play. We'll talk about this a bit later. But focusing on the Lissandra, you said that it's a good matchup against Assassins, especially. It's the first time we see this champion at MSI. Do you think we might see her again? And what kind of place can she find in the meta right now? Um, I think she's only viable as a counter pick uh, to like these melee assassins. Uh, if you try to pick her into something like Oriana, you're just gonna not have a not mm -hmm. have a fun game for sure. But uh, yeah, into Kiana, like uh, you can roam basically on every single wave because Kiana cannot really contest you, and uh, you can just dive side lanes whenever you want. And it's uh, it should be a pretty easy game if you get this matchup. Mm -hmm. That was a nice pocket pick. I feel like it's the second time you bring some pocket pick like this. I remember the Kogmo earlier in the tournament. Last question for you, Marek. Um, you're going to play C9 and RNG. You put up a good fight against RNG last time, and I don't want to uh, talk about C9 because you basically destroyed them last time around. But how do you feel going up against them again as they're going stronger? And yeah, RNG could just stay super strong. Uh, I mean, I think C9, we are just going to destroy them again. Um, I'm hoping to make it a bit faster uh, than last time. I think last time we ended uh, a bit later than we should have. So this time we're just going to make it uh, less than 20 minutes. And yeah, against RNG, I mean, we lost them. We lost to them already. Um, but I think that game came down to like uh, really, really like micro mistakes. Mm -hmm. It was really close. So I, I, I think we can we can win against them next time. All right. Well, we'll see that tomorrow. For now, thank you very much, Humanoid, for the interview. And good luck tomorrow on the rest of your games. Thank you. And Shox, back to you. Thank you very much, Lore. Always fantastic to hear from Marek. And uh, I'd like to use this game versus Pentanet as kind of like a case study um, for what we may see out of MAD later. Because I don't want to go like, wow, you're the best team in the world because yeah. you beat Pentanet. With all respect to Pentanet, this is a team that they had to beat. So I'd like to look at kind of the adaptations they made uh, to inform where they may go in their last two games. Yeah, I think looking at the game, you won't really get much from this. But looking at what MAD lines have changed up is what we want to focus on, right? So I think if you look at the draft behind us, you can see the differences they've gone for the early rotation volleyball 
there. Things like this, more aggressive picks. The Lissandra is obviously more of a counter pick, but the key thing here is El Yoyo has changed it up. And I think there's two big things you can see from it. First of all, the draft from the Volibear first rotation. Second of all, the level one invade. So it shows that Mad Lions have learned from being invaded level one, <laughs> and they've learned that these early game junglers are for the, the, the best. And uh, Hearts got out to Pentanet. Obviously, they're knocked out now. 0-7, they can't make a chance or a miracle run to come back, but they can still upset teams. And Mad Lions, just a clean game overall and good adaptations, I think. Yeah, Lyric, a completely different look from the side of Mad. Yeah, I also like that we even heard that from Humanoid in the interview, right? He said, we realized, hey, we should be playing different picks. We should be trying out uh, uh, going back to a different way to play. And we saw that them and Cloud9 both kind of going back to these early ganking, early skirmishing jungle style. I love that we got three winning lanes out from Mad Lions today. And it makes you wonder, had they done this earlier in the day, you know, would they have picked up a win? Because sure, again, it is up against Pentanet, but they just played so clean. I think the biggest thing to take away from this is you look at Mad Lions' draft here and you look at the way they played the game. You look at Cloud9's draft as well and their win against RNG and you put things together and you're like, well, it looks like Mad and C9 are just kind of adapting to what the LCL, LCK and LPL are doing, and they're changing up their place. I like Humanoid said in the interview, like Lyric was talking about, they realize that what they're doing is not working. And I think what he's referring to there is just too much scaling, too much teamfight oriented champs. And he said that they could just walk into his jungle, take away his jungler's camps, and they fall too far behind. And then the one three ones and the side lane push comes in and you just can't keep up with your team fight comp, right? So they're changing it up and I love to see it. I love to see it as well. But then of course it begs the question, yes, you can switch it up versus Pentanet. And it's great that you did. Yes, we've also seen it actually Actually, uh, versus some of the earlier games they played against PSG. But the question is, Lyric, do they have enough here to uh, make this happen again versus an RNG who they play tomorrow? And that rematch versus a C9 who now looks much stronger. I think 100%. You know, when I look at the players of Mad Lions individually, I don't think any of them are worse, you know, like laners or skirmishers than, than people in Dom Juan, people in RNG. Sure, maybe you can say that they might get out macroed in the mid game, but I don't... I, I want to see Mad Lions take that first step of going for these more early prio comps. And again, trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them in the early game, I definitely think their players are up for it. It's just interesting how the, the conversation just gone full circle or at the top yeah. of the day we're like, well, there's an East versus the West in terms of how they're drafting, right? And what differences we see in scaling versus early game. Can these teams adapt? Who's actually a step behind? We had a meta discussion about how teams keep up. And I think the West is definitely keeping up with the East now in terms of drafts. And I think that there's going to be much more standardized picks and a lot more contested picks now that the drafts are so similar. And I'd love to have a longer discussion about this maybe tomorrow in countdown, but that jungle priority discussion is so interesting. Uh -huh. We brought it up for El Yoya specifically. Isn't it better to go a tier down and pick something you're comfortable on? Blabber showed us, yes it is. I will just roam and kill everyone on my Volibear. El Yoya now also showed his Volibear. We yeah. saw the Lila, Lilia earlier, which then worked for RNG. So, um, yeah, I think it's an interesting conversation, which we can't get too deep in now. Yeah, no, no, unfortunately not now, but jungle's the most interesting, right? You've got Rumble Morgana, which these LPL teams still want to prioritize, and then Madline C9, who want more early game. Yeah, indeed. But the Oppo play player of the game for this one was Kaiser. Uh, there is also a bigger discussion about supports and what they choose to prefer in terms of the picks here. But Kaiser, the bot lane has been a highlight, I think, for Mad Lions, even in the games that it wasn't going so well, Lyric. And uh, we just have to see more of this versus the top duos uh, in MSI at MSI. Oh, oh definitely. And I, I think Kaiser and Karzy can both definitely step up to do this. I loved Kaiser in this game. He was involved in seven out of the eight kills by nine minutes. Yeah. He was just completely all over the map. And this is the fearlessness that we need to see against them going up against the top teams later on. Yeah, and Karzy and Kaiser had a great start to the tournament. Lots of 2v2 kill, kills, like the driving factor behind Mad Lions. And in more recent C, when they face these top teams like Damon and RNG, it feels like they're just one step behind in lane and they were getting 2v2 killed themselves a little bit or falling behind and things like the Kaiser Nautilus against Zaya lanes. But I think this game is just a nice table for them. They got a lot of 2v2 kills. They showed dominance on the bot side. It's definitely a good momentum factor for them coming into uh, the day two, where they, or day five, sorry? Where they're going to face against this stronger is day teams. Five. This is day five. So the final day where they yeah. face against stronger no, teams. No, tomorrow's day five. Oh my god, I'm Yeah, tomorrow's day five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, <laughs> uh, yeah, Kaiser. There's a lot of games, guys. <laughs> Kaiser, player of the game, didn't die to chicken, so that's always a plus. Uh, always we're going to go to a quick break, but when we come back, all important game of Paris Saint Germain versus Damwon Kia. Second place, going over to Damwon Kia. Scoreline equal with that of RNG after the PSG upset. This Rumble stage is very, very interesting, but PSG are going to do it. They defeat the undefeatable, and RNG will draw blood for the first time at MSI 2021.